Okay, so Karen, I have this email from you. Whoops, 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 email, okay. And you asked for some help on, let's call it an advanced issue. Um, we're talking about the possibilities of paranoia, psychosis, when you go off your antidepressant medications, Correct. right? Yes. All right, okay. And so when you have, when you do that, you, the kind of things that come up, you, you feel like the phrase you were using, I think was a break from reality. You are suspicioning yes. people might be spying on you and other things going on, which at some level, you know, aren't, aren't really, really real, but nonetheless, they're showing up and causing you distress. Does I say it right? Yes, you did. Okay. Um, now, you and I talked a little bit about all this. You've been diagnosed by professional health professionals in the field with some of these things, but I, I had a little different view. And um, I want to go over that view a little bit. Okay. Remembering, of course, I'm not a licensed conventional anything. <laughs> mm -hmm. All right. My thought is that whatever labels are given to you, the psychosis, the break from reality, and all of that has a cause. I think you agreed with that. Did you not? Yes, I do. Okay. I do, yeah. I, we didn't discuss this, but let me ask you, uh, the professionals you've dealt with, have they ever talked to you about a, what they think would be a cause? Yeah, I just got interrupted by the telephone. So, so I think I was asking you, um, have the professionals given you their view of what the cause may be of the issue. They never said that. Um, the original doctor that worked with me when I first was diagnosed asked me a lot of questions about what I thought was, had caused it or what, what preceded um, me having these um, types of thoughts, but they they never did tell give me their opinion. Okay, well I'm giving you my opinion. I and I don't have any credentials whatsoever. So how's that? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we were talking about this before recording, and you were telling me some of your history. Now. First thing that happened in your world is that you were adopted at age three days, I think. Was that right? That's, you were adopted. Okay. That's correct. So your original birth mother gave you up. Yes. Right. Okay. And you didn't learn you didn't learn about the fact that you were adopted so sometime much later. But anyway, oftentimes people understand at some level that they've been rejected. I, I, I'm wondering if you understood that. Do you have any sense of that? Well, yes. I always knew I was adopted. What, the part that I didn't know until my 30s was, um, was who my, my birth mother was. Oh, okay. That, that's what I found out much later. But I, my, my um, adopted parents always referred to me as their adopted daughter, and therefore I always knew from the time I was conscious of having thoughts, I, I knew I was something called adopted. Okay. Well, and, and this is a way out there kind of question, but I'm just going to ask it anyway, just in case you have, okay. a, you have a response. But at some level, you may, even at these very, very early ages, you know, uh, within three days and the first weeks and all of that, had some sense that you were being rejected. Mm -hmm. uh, do you have any recollection at all? And that's okay if you don't. I'm just wondering if you do. Um, 
I wouldn't say recollection, but I have done several um, EFT sessions around that uh, part of my life um, that, um, and with the help of practice groups that um, my birth mother was in a lot of distress um, physically during the birth and um, that my birth father was there and held me and told me he loved me and then said goodbye forever and that I was then taken away by somebody who to me was a stranger but she was to be my adoptive mother but then I was taken away from my birth mother by this stranger who was my adoptive mother. As you're saying this now your birth father held you and then said goodbye forever and so on. Mm-hmm. Were you getting emotional intensity describing that? Oh, yes. Yes. Uh, currently at that moment when you were talking about it. Oh, currently? No. I've... No, no, no. Just a few mi- moments ago when you were talking about it. Were you getting distressed talking about it? I don't think so. Did you okay. notice distress? Uh, I did. I did. Uh, oh, okay. But, but that, <laughs> that, that's why I was... I was asking you, but okay, okay, it's okay. We're we're exploring some things for now. We're eventually going to get to unseen therapists, but I want to explore things having to do with the cause of the issue. Okay. Okay. All right. So we're going to explore around a little bit and play ping pong for some stuff and guess at some things and see what happens. Okay. All right. So um, the only part. Of, thing I I want to mention there is there's some possibility that um, because you were adopted, there's a rejection, there's a lack of love, there is a some void in you from a love point of view, starting at very early ages. Mm -hmm. It's a possibility, whether you recall it, get in touch with it right now or anything like that. I'm, I'm calling it a possibility. All right. Okay. Now, you also talked about your mother was in stress during the birth. I'm going to presume, but you tell me if I'm incorrect here, that, that um, you were not a wanted child. You were a erotic accident. Uh, uh, did I say That's that right? That's true. That's okay. correct. All right. So, so during the pregnancy, and I'm not your mother, and I don't know the facts, but I could imagine that your mother would be saying, oh, I got pregnant. I mean, what am I going to do? And I don't like this. And I can't be a mother. And you know, I, I wish, you know. an unwanted child in that sense. Would that fit? Yes, it would. Okay. Now, the fetus, the embryo inside pregnant mother picks all these things up. We know that scientifically because the doctors put Mm-hmm. sensors on mother's belly and every time mother has a emotion of some kind the child reacts mm-hmm. we, we know that we don't know exactly what it is but what i want to do here is start laying the possibilities down for this void which i'm we're pointing to as cause Fit, are okay. we fitting so far yes would you like a little bit more information about that no, I don't want any more information no, at all. I, I didn't think you did. <laughs> Go ahead. Please. <laughs> um, I received uh, information from unseen therapist, and I, you, you've always said, you know, these things may or may not be true because we don't know if we're hearing correctly. But uh, what I heard from unseen therapist was that uh, my birth mother had tried to. Um, abort me twice and commit suicide once while I was in the womb. Okay. Well, all right. Big to me, big clue right there. She tried to abort you. That's a, that's a rejection. Yes. Dear. Well, yes. <laughs> I know. <laughs> that's a, that's a big time rejection. I don't want you get out of my body is the message. Okay. Mm-hmm. All right. It's probably not personal because he doesn't even know you, you know, at that right. point. Right. <laughs> but she's, she's got this thing growing inside of her 
that's going to mess up her life. And she didn't ask for mm-hmm. it. And she, you know, gave into some erotic moments and like we all mm-hmm. do and whatever. Okay. And so mm-hmm. here comes, here comes you who have nothing to do with it. Right. You didn't even get to participate in the erotic party. Okay. Right. <laughs> right. Well, I was there, right? Because <laughs> well, you were sort of there, but you're not really there yet. Okay. <laughs> you Parts are, of me were there. <laughs> you were a result. You were a result. Okay. Mm-hmm. Anyway. Okay. So now we have mo- something more filled into this love void that I'm looking at as possible cause to abortion attempts mother's own attempt, you know, uh, then you are adopted, you know, you are given up after birth, Mm -hmm. another rejection, if you will. All right. Now, one of the things that we all do, I do it, everybody does that, you do it, everybody does this as children, even as adults, but particularly as children, we are looking for love, love, please, Hold me, take care of me, breastfeed me, take care of my needs. You know, I'm I'm helpless. Please Mm -hmm. take care of me. Love me, love me, love me, love me. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, your birth mother could not do that. Your adoptive Mm -hmm. mother, as you tell me, couldn't uh, either didn't either did not or could not or whatever do that as well. Talk about that some, could you? My adoptive mother, um, I think when she was around, she did her best to, um, to give me love as an infant. However, she did not stay home even 24 hours with me when she brought me home. I was left with a succession of uh, babysitters that none of whom stayed around very long. Um, My adoptive mother went back to work and um, apparently couldn't find a babysitter she was happy with for me. And um, so I had many uh, babysitters so, you know, more, more people leaving me that I would get a little attached to, and then they would leave because um, they'd get fired. <laughs> All right, important phrase, because this is going to build for something else that happened later on. Babysitters that you would get attached to, and then they would leave. Mm-hmm. Okay, that is to me, and you correct me, please, because I didn't walk in your shoes, okay? Mm -hmm. to me that is you think i've got this love void i got this love void i got this love void it's a big void i want to fill it somebody love me please and we have a babysitter oh good here's a here's a here's a possibility here's a candidate oh oh we get some connection leave connection leave another connection leave am i hearing a pattern yes definitely a pattern the pattern saying These are my words now, so please, please, please correct, all right? I'm looking for love. I'm looking for, oh, here's a possibility. Here's a possibility. Oh, love me, love me. Gone. Maybe Mm -hmm. I'm not lovable. Oh, oh, here's Mm -hmm. another one. Here's another one. Gone. Maybe I'm not lovable. Mm -hmm. Another one, another one. Gone. Not lovable. And again, and again. Always cementing the idea there's something wrong with me. I'm not lovable. I don't mm-hmm. count. I'm not good enough. I'm defective. How, how am I doing? Mm-hmm. Yes, all, all those things. Okay. And by the way, the only, the only way I know, well, quote, know that these things, that I had so many babysitters, um, is because, uh, I mean, I knew she had gone back to work, but... Um, I had no idea how many babysitters I had until unseen therapist shared that information with me. So again, oh. again, may or may not be true, but that's, that's where I got that information. 
Well, is what I'm saying then fitting with your understanding? Yes, it is, because it, it, it fits with my mother's personality that those things would happen. Okay. Yes. All right. Because later on, later on, we would have uh, help with the cleaning, and she was never happy with those people either. We would have a succession of those, but never stick with one either. So, Regarding you, her interface with you. Yes. You're talking about she would make efforts at being loving. I, when I was, when I was an infant, yes. As I grew older, um, anytime I would try to become independent or have an independent thought or do something my way, she didn't like that and would scold me about that or try to make me feel guilty when I was old enough to feel guilty. Can you remember a phrase she may have used? Like, what's wrong with you, or yet again, or something like that? What's the matter with you? Oh, okay. I'm making a little note here. Okay. Da -da. So rather than, rather than get... Um, Love is, is not like you were just being ignored. You were also criticized. It's the, it's the other end, mm -hmm. the other side, the opposite end of love. Mm -hmm. You were criticized, abused in that, se in that sense. Mm -hmm. Was there physical abuse of any kind? Sexual abuse? No, no. Okay. Neither physical nor sexual. Okay. No. All right. But consistent criticism, am I saying it right? Yes. Okay. So here's you yet again, looking to fill this void. You've been, trying to be aborted twice. You were given away. You've tried to fill the void with a number of babysitters. Reject, 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 reject. All right. And your mother echoes things like, what's, what's the matter with you over and over and over again as you grew up? That's True. not... That's not filling a love void, I am thinking. That's making that love void even more voider, bigger. True, you, true. You, now, are those just my, I don't want to impose my words. No, no, that's absolutely true. And um, another time, you know, one of the ladies that we had to help us with the cleaning, um, didn't have her own car, so we'd have to pick her up and uh, take her home at the end of the day. And um, one day we were taking her home, and uh, it was time for her to get out of the car. And so I gave her a big hug before she got out of the car and, uh, you know, told her goodbye. And um, when she got out of the car, my mother said, um, you're not supposed to hug her. Don't be doing that. Okay. I, I'm going to make a note here. Hold on one second. Hugging. I'm still writing. Um, what's, what's most important about that? Um is your response, not what your mother said, but your response, was your response like, oh, I'm bad again. Oh, something's wrong with me again. Oh, I, I can't even give love. I mean, give me your, I'm, I'm making that stuff up, but tell me your, um, your response. If, if I give love to someone other than my mother, I'm a bad person. And that makes the void deeper, bigger, is my perception. Mm -hmm. Yes. Adds to the void, at least. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Now, let's shift forward a bit. Unless you have more to add in the meantime, but let me shift forward, and then you can fill in blanks if you want to. Okay. okay. To your age, roughly 41. This is this we talked about bef before recording. Mm -hmm. All right. And you met a lady, a friend, a good friend. Uh, 
you were like 41 years older, but, and she had, if I recall it correctly, a number of characteristics like your mother, with the exception that from time to time she would be very complimentary to you, very loving, say a lot of, fill your void, if you will, mm -hmm. significantly. Talk about that some. Uh, first of all, am I right overall? Yes, that's correct. Okay. So talk a little bit, if you would, about how that was filling your void and what was going on there. It was filling my void because um, although this person had some of the negative qualities of my mother, she was unlike my mother in that she um, used a lot of um, positive affirmations with me and um, would always tell me what a good friend I was and um, that she, quote, loved me, you know, in a platonic way, but um, because of all the wonderful things I would help her with. And um, yeah. Okay. And so talk to me in terms of what that was doing to your void. Was it, I mean, I, I, I'm hearing you got, oh, good. And you were, you were all into it and mm -hmm. you, you wanted to be around her and everything else because mm -hmm. she was, her words were filling up this big mm -hmm. void. Something I'm hearing, I'm hearing something like your babysitters, only much grander in scope. Mm -hmm. Would mm -hmm. that be right? Yes, yes. So here, you know, she was sometimes critical, but but a lot of times very positive with me and very loving speech and um, encouragement, positive affirmations. Um, and so consequently, I started wanting more of that. And um, it got to be too much for her. In fact, I think she used the word, or you used the word in our previous conversations, not recorded yet, the word clingy. Did she use yes. that word with you? Um, she just, she used the word, no, I think clingy was my word, but she just wanted uh, to have a less intense friendship with me after a certain point. That was her word. She wanted to dial down the intensity. All right. So if I got it, if I got it right, from her perspective, you were, you were good friends, but you mm -hmm. were coming over the top. And, yes. and I can see this. Your void is getting filled. My God. And that's a big need. It's a really important need. It's a need much bigger than most people even realize is there. Okay. Mm -hmm. It's a really big, big V. And yours has, has a particularly big void in it, given the background. All right. Yes. And the rejections and all of that. Mm -hmm. All right. So she, she then would say, I'm trying to be her for the moment. Karen, this is a bit over the time. Mean, these are her words, but I'm going to say them anyway. You okay. tell me if, if they would, if they reflect correctly. Okay. Okay. Without being, without being this abrupt, she's essentially saying, Karen, you're over the top. This is too much. I'd like to be friends, but you're going, it's, it's too clingy for me. It's too intense. So let's mm -hmm. just be friends and, and leave it at that. Mm -hmm. how'd, how'd I do? Yes. All right. What happened? I mean, to me, given my perception of the void, that's her shutting the door yet again. Yes, another person slamming the door in my face. Yeah. Okay. And that is I think you were telling me earlier where the psychotic, the psychosis type stuff, the break from reality yes. started showing up. You were, yes, you were then thinking maybe she was spying on you and 
You were even having yes, thoughts. Was, of, go ahead. I was I was deeply hurt uh, by her saying that she wanted to dial down the intensity and not um, not be together as much and not do as many things together. Um, and so I, it was too much. It was too much for me to handle at that particular time. Um, and so at that at that time, I did start having the the break from reality. Okay. Now this is the place, and I'm speaking out of turn here because I really don't have medical background. Okay or psychiatric okay. background or something. But this mm -hmm. is a place where I think conventional doctors and the like would start describing what's going on with stuff in the brain. Some part of the brain doesn't do this and mm -hmm. some kind of a chemical thing and whatever. They start describing it in these terms. But I don't, did that happen here? Is that how it was described to you or they just don't know? Um, not at that time, but, but later on, the, the doctor who diagnosed me said that there was a low um, norepinephrine. No epinephrine, okay. N no, low norepinephrine. It's a tongue twister. Norepinephrine. No. Which is one of the. Okay. No norepinephrine. Or low nor norepinephrine, okay. which is one of the neurotrans. It's a neurotransmitter like serotonin, but it's a norepinephrine is the name of it. Okay. And she All said right. that was the one she thought was low in my case. Well, okay. I don't. I've heard the term norep that word. Okay, I've heard it. Okay. I don't mm -hmm. even know what it is. Okay. Uh, mm -hmm. th that's how little medical background that I have, but. Mm -hmm. My background is a Stanford engineer. Uh, mm -hmm. Thinks I think I bring a little common sense into it when I say, well, okay, if something is wrong with the production or the amount or whatever of norepinephrine, what causes that? And when I ask the doctors <laughs> these, these kinds of questions, they don't have an answer to that. Mm -hmm. okay? mm -hmm. And so we're back down to cause. And so we got to find a cause. And, and to me, from this story, the cause has something to do with this void that needs to get filled. Mm -hmm. You are running around with somebody who has been rejected at heavy levels over and over and over again. Now, I want to ask you another comparative question here. Okay. Um, I know your emotional response for reasons we've already discussed about being rejected, not loved, not lovable, having the void and so on. I, we got that emotional response. Logically, logically, are you not lovable? No, I'm not not lovable. <laughs> Or it, say it differently. Uh, I, yes, okay, yes, I am are. lovable. I am okay. lovable. <laughs> Logically. Okay. You, you know that big because why? You have friends, you have a husband, you have, how do you know you're lovable? All those things. And I have a relationship with God. <laughs> so that tells me that and shows me that. Okay. So we have an emotional response, which is quite different than the logical response. Mm -hmm. I mean, way different, as a matter of fact. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So what we need to do is to go to the emotional response, do something with that, the void, if you will, so it can match up to the logical response. Does that fit? Mm -hmm. Yes. Talk to me a little bit about your relationship with God that tells you that you are lovable. Put some words around that, could you? Um, probably at the time that I had the, um, the break from reality, I probably did not have as, well, I definitely did not have as, 
as deep of a relationship with God as I do now. But I always knew that God loved me. Um, but now, um, God is just so involved in every de detail of my life. Um, it's it's just unfathomable to me how much God loves me. Um, what what how coach me a little bit? How 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 do you want me to explain this? Well, let, let me just explore it with you for a moment. Now, okay. when you say God, to me, I also equate that with unseen therapists. Do you okay. equate that or do you do? You, you, yes, uh, yes, I do. Okay. Un unseen therapist being the, the spiritual essence of all religions. So we don't want to get involved in stepping on some religion's toes. So God, Correct. Allah, Jesus, Buddha. Mm -hmm. The All spiritual those, essence, yeah. the loving essence of God mm -hmm. is our unseen therapist. So, mm -hmm. so here, well, well, okay. So here you, it's unfathom, using your, your terms, I think I said it right. It is unfathomable to you how much God loves you. Did I say it right? Yes? Yes. Okay. Now, you know that for some, you get some, I'm exploring this, you get some sensory thing, some, some feeling, something about, oh, God is here. Talk about how you know God loves you. Okay. Um, one time I was talking to a friend of mine and um, she we were, she was aware that I dealt with depression and she was telling me how she had been feeling depressed and she asked God to give her joy and God did that very day give her joy and her depression was gone. And I've been dealing, I had been dealing with long-term depression. And so I, I said to myself, well, if God can give her joy that, that fast, why isn't God, why isn't unseen therapist slash God giving me joy. And so I had words with God slash unseen therapist and said, if you can give her joy, where's mine? Why aren't you giving it to me? I was not happy with God slash unseen therapist at that time. And later that day, I was driving down the freeway in my car by myself. And all of a sudden, I was just enveloped in joy, full body joy like I've never felt before. And it, that, that feel, that joy feeling lasted um, at least a week. Um, and just, you know, that, that there's a being who could <laughs> give me such joy. I know that that being loves me. All right. Very much. Yeah. Yes. Okay, but let me explore some more because I think we're going to get someplace with this. All right. Mm -hmm. So the joy, by the way, I, I think you're equating that with when you're having the joy, the depression goes, it's out of here. Tem temporarily, yes. Well, for the week anyway. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Now, for some reason or other, that joy leaves now is that you may not know this answer that we're, we're going to explore some okay it leaves because god went on vacation it leaves because oh now you're dwelling on some of this void stuff again uh and it's taking over or mm -hmm. something else tell me well i think it just kind of gradually faded away with um just with the time and and probably, as you say, with whatever thoughts that I habitually was thinking at the time um, brought back the depression. Okay, so let me go back to I mean you're one of the, you're one of the one of the active members of our advanced high-end optimal EFT 
course with the unseen therapist and so on. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so just for this recording, I want to put on a little piece of that, which I think fits here. Okay. And that's the, that's the idea of free will. We all have, spiritually speaking, free will, meaning we can believe whatever we want to believe. An unseen therapist, God, is not going to interfere because that would be interfering with your free will to believe as you choose. Okay. And that would be a very unloving thing to do. It would be the thought police. You can't believe that. You got to believe this. Okay. Better, better to organically shift. You got some beliefs that are in your way. Um, you are just as powerful. That's where we're coming from here as God or as the unseen therapist. You have all that power yourself. You believed into other things. But you have all that power. And so unseen therapist is not going to interfere with that. So if you want to believe you've got a big love void, okay, mm -hmm. you can let the opposite in for a while until you want to you know, believe back in the love void. Okay, you can do that. Mm -hmm. Okay. And well, that may seem a bit theoretical here. I suspect that's a contributor. What do you think? Yeah, I think so. All right. So here we are. I'm going to say this a little differently. Okay. But here we are, young you, for lots of very understandable reasons, having this big love void, trying to fill it, having the doors shut on you, and so on. Okay. To the point where you can't take it anymore, and the door gets shut yet again to break with reality, and, and so on. Okay. Now. Along, along the way, you know that because of this joy experience, God loves you in this unfathomable way. But, but here you are with this love void that has been with you for so long. It's reflecting beliefs you have about yourself that were put there by other people. <laughs> okay? mm -hmm. And now they're showing up again. Mm -hmm. It's not like God's on vacation. It's like at some level, subconscious, I'm suggesting, you're choosing to get back into that again. And it seems like God has left you. But in, in, in reality, you are bringing in your previous unresolved stuff. Are we fitting okay or not? Yes. Yes, definitely. All right. So what we want to do is see if we can't get a good start on something here. And that is bring in unseen therapists, God, to fill in more of that void. It's going to take your cooperation. Now, you may consciously say, well, I'd love to do that. Okay. In the background, someplace is a is a unresolved, bigger need that's driving some of this. It's a, it's like I am damaged goods. I'm at some level emotionally, I'm not lovable, and so on. And there's some kind of a fight within you between that emotional stuff and God loves me in unfathomable ways. Uh, did I play? I don't want to impose my thoughts, but is it fitting? Yes, it's fitting. All right. So I'm thinking of having an unseen therapist session. Not sure where it's going to go because I'm just going to narrate the whole thing and whatever is going to show up is going to show up with me. But we're going to need to do this jointly see love is best when it's shared just like when you're with our oeft course practice groups you're in love is best when shared so i want to get the idea here that um, we are sharing we are working jointly you 
me and the unseen therapist. We're all three working together. So what that's really going to mean is, well, I'm going to start this unseen therapist session and sort of narrate it for whatever comes to me. All right. Mm -hmm. Your participation is encouraged because if we're going through all this and something occurs to you, speak up. Okay. We're, working, we're working together on this because uh, one of the things that may well happen, is, well, here's this idea. And so you need, that's your participant. If mm -hmm. you have one, you're not required to have one, by the way. Okay. All okay. Right. <laughs> if, you if you have some one or more, here we go. If you don't, that's okay too. Okay. Just understand you are invited, encouraged to participate in all this, not just sit there and have it done to you. Okay. Thank you. All right. Okay. Now I'm trying to think. Um, it's always best if we can before, if we get some kind of a zero to 10 measure of where you are before we start. And our conversation has sort of gone over places, but and chances are we've done something with this, but, but close your eyes for the moment and, and go inward and look at that void we've been discussing. And if you can, tell me on a scale of zero to 10, how intense is the void? Maybe about an eight. All right. Are there any physical sensations to go with that? Not really. Okay. All right. All right. You, you may or may not get some kind of physical sensations as we're going, you know, a tight chest or a, something in the head or uh, something. If you do, oh, if, okay. you, if you do, just tight, let me know. Tight, tight in the throat area. Oh, okay. Well, that may come and go. Other things may come and go. I, maybe, maybe not as we un unfold here, but if, if they do, that's part of your participation. Just let me know what's, what's, okay. going, on, what's going on. Okay, this is gonna differ a little bit. Well, let me think, let me think a moment. Um, I think I wanna begin with a specific event, but I think we're gonna get much broader. It's gonna be more like big reframe type stuff. That's what I th think is going to be coming on here. But I'm imagining a specific event where your mother is saying, what's the matter with you? Would that be a good one to start with? Mm -hmm. Now, my, my guess is she said that or stuff like that repeatedly over time. Yes. So it's not like I remember it age four in the kitchen, mother said, okay, <laughs> do you recall a specific time? <laughs> do you recall a specific time when she said that? Um, I would say she probably said it when we were dropping off the lady who helped us with the cleaning. What's the matter with you? Hugging her. Saying that to her or to you? To me. Oh, saying that to you. Okay. okay. All right. Mm -hmm. All right. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. That's because you were going to hug the lady, right? And I did, yeah. Yeah, okay. All right. We're going to start there with a specific event. Um, close your eyes. Go back to that. Run that movie and tell me on a scale of zero to 10 what number that is currently. I'm getting nine. Or nine. Physical throat, a throat thing with that or not? No. Emotion. 
Um, I, I do have tightness in my throat, which would be about, um, let's see, more like a six or a seven. Okay. All right. So we're going to, we're going to, we're going to take a trip into Funsville for the moment. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to bring an unseen therapist. A lot of times people tend to think, uh Oh, we're going to bring an unseen therapist. We got to get really serious now. Uh, okay. <laughs> be serious if you want, but okay. it never hurts to be a little light sometimes as well. And lightness could help with somebody with a big mm -hmm. irrational mm -hmm. I'm saying the irrational void. I said it right. No. Okay. All right. Okay. okay. So if you would, please close your eyes. Take a nice, deep, relaxing breath. You know. And just as a way of inviting unseen therapists, just recall a simple, loving moment in your own life. And when you're there, just nod your head. All right, good. Okay, so um, this uh, recalling the loving moment is just simply a way to invite unseen therapy. It's like what we're attempting to do is to align ourselves with the pure love of the unseen therapist, the unfathomable love that you know is already there. The same love that gives you all this joy for a week, which you managed to sh shift aside with other unresolved stuff. Mm -hmm. And so unseen therapist, you know, she, she knows you're not at her level yet on this ultimate, never ending, unfathomable love, but you're doing your best. You're listening. We're listening. We want to give her a little something to work on. And we're saying with all this, okay, unseen therapy, we're listening now. We've listened to the ego too much. Okay. So for now, we're going to listen, pay attention to you. So shift your focus now back to this this time as a child, when you were going to hug the cleaning lady, well, you did hug the cleaning mm -hmm. lady. And your mother says to you, what's the matter with you? And you get a nine on that intensity. What's wrong with me? I am a bad person. Something about that doesn't seem quite rational. But as a child, as a child, what choice do you have? You're not the authority here. Your mother is. And at this point, you don't really realize it's your mother who does not really know how to love. She doesn't know how. A little bit here and there, maybe, but very critical. Not giving you the kind of love you need for the love void you have experienced over and over and over again, up to and including and even beyond this particular time. So unseen therapist understands that. And she wants to remind you, the adult you now, of this one week this one week where you had all this joy, where the depression just lifted, there were no problems. It's all this happiness and joy. You know, it just, it just showed up while you were driving. <laughs> she wants you to remind you of that and let you know that if you choose, this could be a permanent place to be. In fact, whether or not you choose it, it is your permanent place to be. You've just let your past irrational rejections 
take over. So unseen therapist says, okay, let's go back to this. What's the matter with you event? And let's look at mother for the moment. Let her, let her stand in front of you. Notice, notice her posture. Notice any tension in her body and in her face in her eyes and notice that she's dealing with some unrest of her own or else. Why would somebody be critical? Why would they always be critical, 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 some love here and there, but largely critical, critical. Why would somebody do that unless they had their own unrest? An unseen therapist says, yes, it's her unrest. So let's imagine within your mother, this dry love sponge. And we want to fill up that love sponge with love. And I'm going to help you do this for your mother. I'm standing beside you. And I'm going to fill up your love sponge. And as we do that, we're going to radiate and share that with your mother and her need to say, what's the matter with you? I mean, why, why would you say that to a child who, whose only sin was to hug the cleaning lady? It's not your issue. It's not your issue. It, is, it seems like your issue. You're not the bad person here. All you wanted to do was hug. It's your mother's issue. We don't say that critically. No, we say that understandingly. It is your mother's issue. And so as you develop your own love sponge and fill it up and get understanding you didn't have before, that love sponge turns into this joy you experience for a week. And you share that now. You radiate it. You don't let you don't send it and let go of it. You radiated towards your mother. And as her love sponge begins to fill up, notice any tension in her body relaxing. Her face, uh, tension getting softer. Her eyes, softer. She's never had the joy you've had. And now you get to share it with her. And as, says Unseen Therapist, as you share it with her, you're sharing love. You're sharing your joy. You're allowing your joy to overtake, which is its natural place. This discordance with your mother and what's wrong with you. You're not the bad person here. How can you be the bad person? Who in the world would say a child hugging a cleaning lady is a bad person? <laughs> That's a question to you, actually, Karen. Who in your world that you know of would um, consider that child a bad person for hugging the cleaning lady? Uh, not most people. <laughs> well, let me ask you, given, given this, and with your eyes still closed, because we're still in our little session here. Is that little girl a bad person? No. Is she a loving person? Yes. Is she, at this point, a joyful person? Not anymore. <laughs> she, well, she is or is not a joyful person. She was until she got told she was a bad girl for hugging somebody. Oh, okay. Okay. No. All right. We're going to ask the question a little differently. Now that she's hugged somebody, an unseen therapist right. is, is, is painting this picture for you. 
Is that little girl, is she still, what, I'm a bad person. I'm a, be that little girl. Be that little girl. Are you a bad person? Are you a joyful person? Where are you? I'm not a bad person. No, I'm. Yeah, I'm. I'm full of joy, and I. I just. Do you have the potential? This is a question you've never been asked before, probably. But do you have the potential, as that little girl? of radiating love, radiating joy in a way that could transform those around you, including your mother? I think I, think I do, yeah. Okay. And could that, once you maintain that, radiate joy and shift the lives of all those around you? Well, that would be a wonderful thing. <laughs> well, I'm asking you if it, if it, the possibility is in there. Yes. Okay. All right. Good. Now let's shift a moment. Let's take this joyful moment. Let's take this joyful love, this state of being. And let's go back and back and back. Now, let me interject for a moment. I know there is a something we talked about before this session, this painting with this African-American woman in this yesterday's type scene. Mm -hmm. um, we're going to leave that be okay. for now, just just so you know, okay? But, okay. Um, but we're gonna go, we're gonna go back to the womb and there is your birth mother quite upset that she's not ready to have a child and tries to abort you twice, even take her own life. We're gonna take you can do all, all this in your imagination now. Okay? We're going to imagine that the joyful you is now going to take that joy within the womb and expand it out. We're going to have that joy say, ah, birth mother, I love you. Oh, I love you. I, I know you're having problems with my presence. I know my presence, my physical presence is perceived to be a problem for you in your life. Yes, I know all of that. I know you have all this problem, but pay attention. All this love is right here within you. And you can abort me or try to abort me and all of that. And that is okay. That is your choice. I know I exist on a different level than just the physical. But I'm going to spend a little time, and I'd like to have you now spend a little time inside your birth mother's pregnant belly, generating love for her. Spend a few moments doing that, and then tell me whether you're successful at it or not, partially successful, big time successful, can't do anything with it. Tell me, give it that try. Take your time. And then tell me what's, what's showing up.
Um, so my birth mother is saying to me that um, she didn't know before that I was a real person and that um, she really appreciated all the love that I was radiating and um, and she began to feel joy herself because now she felt like she was loved. And is there any shift in the way you feel? Um, I, I feel pretty happy. Okay. All right. Now let's shift again. Okay. Let's shift to your age, 40, 41, where your friend basically said, who was filling your love void with all the complimentary loving type comments who basically said this is a bit too intense for me that's my paraphrase mm -hmm. and let's walk in her shoes for the moment she has her own bit of criticisms like they're talking about like everybody does we all have some unrest here in her perception it's her perception now we're talking about your love void is more than she's prepared for. Doesn't make you a bad person, but she, like anybody else, is looking out for herself. She wants to have her own level of comfort. Everybody does this. And your needs in this case aren't fitting because the love void is so heavy. We're not mm -hmm. going to criticize her. We're going to understand her. She's not really, mm -hmm. in her perception, shutting the door and causing you damage. She's shutting the door, although she may not use that term. She's trying to, she's trying to soften the ties, is maybe a better way to say it, okay? Mm -hmm. So that she doesn't have quite the responsibility she's feeling mm -hmm as a result of your needs and your presence and too much for her. Okay. Mm -hmm. Everybody's entitled to their own levels of too much, whatever it is. Okay. But now we're recognizing, or ho I hope we're recognizing, that while we're understanding her response, we're also going to go back to that, that moment when the door was shut and when she said less intense, another specific event, she said less intense, please. That's my paraphrase. Okay. And here comes this thud, this void. And there's you saying help. An unseen therapist says, remember the joy? Remember the joy? Right. She's only doing what she needs to do, the real, she has her own issue. You have your own love void. But now, now, if you can, imagine the love void and all of a sudden your love sponge goes dry instantly. Right. And you sit back and you say, unseen therapist, Help me fill up my love sponge. Help me, let me really see this and feel if you can. Take your time. The love sponge filling up. And when you're done, whether or not you're successful, just open your eyes and we'll talk. Okay.
Okay. All right. So how was it in there? Were you able to follow along or would you have a bunch mm -hmm. of competing thoughts or, or tell me? No, I was following along. Okay. All right. Well, let's do a little testing if we can. Close your eyes, if you would, and go back. Go back to this time when you were hugging the cleaning lady and your mother said, what's the matter with you? And tell me if you're still a nine. No, I'm not still a nine. Well, estimate a number. I'm feeling so good that I want to say zero, but what I'm hearing is six. Well, there's a big difference between zero and six. I know. <laughs> <laughs> so, so how about the throat? Is the throat a six or a seven? There's a constriction there. No, it's pretty relaxed. Zero-ish? Yeah, yeah. Zero-ish. You said you were hearing a six, but I forgot the word, but you were feeling, you weren't sure it was there. I mean, say it again. I, I'm feeling very, very peaceful and loving about it. Um, and I'm hearing myself tell my mother, you know, that there's nothing wrong with me for loving someone. Um, and and I just, I, I'm sensing that it's a zero. Okay. Sometimes people say to me, I hear, I hear a six or a six mm -hmm. pops up in my mind or a four or something like that. Mm -hmm. I never know what to do, what to do with that. <laughs> you know, so that's why, that's why I start questioning it and so on. So another, another little test. Okay. Close your eyes and visualize the void and tell me if you're still an eight. Oh, no, 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 no. That's a zero as well, I believe. All right. Now, one of the things you've probably heard me say often in our course is I never want to be fooled by a temporary result. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, so you'll want to go test these things tomorrow morning. Okay. Okay. Um, chances are, chances are what we've done here is a good start. Um, mm -hmm. It may be we've just completely collapsed it. I mean, that's possible, but uh, I would be suspicious of that because there's probably more to do. That's mm -hmm. why this session was recorded. You can go back. I would go back over it and over it and over it because each time you do, it's likely to take a little bigger, bigger piece each time. Okay. okay. Um, and other things are likely to come up that you can then substitute in it and so on. But when you were just now, when you were going back to the, the void and calling it a zero, all right, uh, were you having a tight throat? I don't think so. All right. No, no. No. Um, in fact, when, you know, when you said, you know, what about the void? Is it still an eight? The thought came to my through my head. What void? There is no void. <laughs> well, that, <laughs> I, I do like to hear that one. <laughs> but I'm always see. It's just it's just a way to be. It may well be we've done a whole lot here, right? but we don't mm -hmm. know until time goes by. We just right. don't, we don't know until times go by and other things show up and the, there's some likelihood other things are going to show. Oh, we forgot that. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. there's a lot of things we probably didn't put on the table here that we could have. Mm -hmm. But I think what we did, I think we did it at the least, is got a good start on my term. 
the cause for the for the issues, the cause for the depression, mm -hmm. the cause for the the break from reality and the all of that. Okay. Does it feel that way to you or do you feel neutral like that? Or give me some sense of, of, of where that lands with you. Well, I'm kind of floating on a cloud right now. I'm feeling pretty good. So I, I feel like we probably did get a really good start. Okay. All right. Mm -hmm.